These are the Sunday recommendations for my free email list for April the 11th, 2021. This week's blog post is the 14th in my series on the Wadsworth Athenaeum. It includes works such as that very large, 10 feet wide, painting of Farragut at the Battle of Mobile Bay. Second recommendation, a poem by Andrew Marvel to his coy mistress, probably dates to 1681. I would be very shocked if you hadn't heard this before, but for the sake of the third recommendation, I included it. I'm giving you a link in the email to Sir John Gielgud reading this poem. And yes, he is Sir John, and yes, he is British. He does it very well. But I, I wanted to try and do it with the vibe of Alec Baldwin in one of his smarmier roles. So here we go. Had we but world enough and time, this coyness lady were no crime. We would sit down and think which way to walk. We would sit down and think which way to walk and pass our long love's day. Thou by the Indian Ganges side shouldst rubies find. I by the tide of Humber would complain. I would love you ten years before the flood, and you should, if you please, refuse to the conversion of the Jews. My vegetable love should grow vaster than empires and more slow. A hundred years should go to praise thine eyes, and on thy forehead gaze. Two hundred to adore each breast, but thirty thousand to the rest. An age at least for every part, and the last age should show your heart, for lady you deserve this state, nor would I love at lower rate. But at my back I always hear time's winged chariot hurrying near, and yonder all before us lie deserts of vast eternity. Thy beauty shall no more be found, nor in thy marble vault shall sound my echoing song. Then worms shall try that long-preserved virginity, and your quaint honour turn to dust, and into ashes all my lust. The grave's a fine and private place, but none, I think, do there embrace. Now, therefore, while the youthful hue sits on thy skin like morning dew, and while thy willing soul transpires at every pore with instant fires, now let us sport us while we may, and now, like amorous birds of prey, rather at once our time devour than languish in his slow-chapped bower. Let us roll all our strength and all our sweetness up into one ball, and tear our pleasures with rough strife through the iron gates of life. Thus, though we cannot make our sun stand still, yet we will make him run. Okay. Third recommendation, A.D. Hope, a poem called His Coy Mistress to Mr. Marvel. He died in 2000, so I would guess this is second half of the 20th century. Incidentally, I like both these poems, so don't go reading my political or ideological affiliations into them. Since you have world enough in time, sir, to admonish me in rhyme, pray, Mr. Marvel, can it be you think you have persuaded me? Then let me say... You want the art to woo, much less to win my heart. The verse was splendid, I'll admit, and, sir, you have a pretty wit. All that, indeed, your poem lacked was logic, modesty, and tact. Slight faults, and ones to which I own, your sex is generally prone. But though you lose your labor, I shall not refuse you a reply. First, for the language you employ, a term I deprecate is coy. The ill-bred miss, the bird-brained jill, may simper and be coy at will. A lady, sir, as you will find, keeps counsel, or she speaks her mind, means what she says, and scorns to fence, and palter with feigned innocence. The ambiguous mistress next you set beside this graceless epithet. Coy mistress, sir, who gave you leave to wear my heart upon your sleeve? or to imply, as sure you do, I had no other choice than you, and must remain upon the shelf unless I should bestir myself. Shall I be moved to love you, pray, by hints that I must soon decay? No woman's won by being told how quickly she is growing old, nor will such ploys, when all is said, serve to stampede us into bed. When from pure blackmail next you move to bribe or lure me into love, no less inept, my rhyming friend, snared by the means, you miss your end. 
Time's winged chariot and the rest, as poetry may pass the test. Readers will quote those lines, I trust, till you and I and they are dust. But I, your destined prey, must look less at the bait than at the hook, nor when I do can fail to see just what it is you offer me. Love on the run, a rough embrace, snatched in the fury of the chase, the grave before us, and the wheels of time's grim chariot on our heels, while we, like amorous birds of prey, tear at each other by the way. To say the least, the scene you paint is, what you call my honor, quaint. And on this point, what prompted you so crudely, and in public too, to canvas, and indeed make free with my entire anatomy? Poets have license, I confess, to speak of ladies in undress. Thighs, hearts, brows, breasts are well enough. In verses this is common stuff. But, well I ask, to draw attention to worms in what I blush to mention, and prate of dust upon it too. Sir, was this any way to woo? Now, therefore, while male self-regard sits on your cheek, my hopeful bard, may I suggest, before we part, the best way to a woman's heart is to be modest, candid, true. Tell her you love, and show you do, neither cajole nor condescend, and base the lover on the friend. Don't bustle her or fuss or snatch. A suitor looking at his watch is not a posture that persuades willing, much less reluctant, maids. Remember that she will be stirred more by the spirit than the word, for truth and tenderness do more than coruscating metaphor. Had you addressed me in such terms, and prattled less of graves and worms, I might, who knows, have warmed to you. But as things stand, must bid adieu, though I am grateful for the rhyme, and wish you better luck next time. The fourth recommendation this week is a building by Louis Sullivan. DianeDurantyWriter.com has hundreds of posts on sculpture, painting, architecture, and my other obsessions. To join the free Sunday recommendations email list, visit the URL that's on the screen, or email me. And you can say, well done, Diane, or support my work and receive rewards by means of the tip jar on DianeDurantyWriter.com. As always, thank you for listening.